Hey guys, welcome to subtopic 3.4 on carbohydrates. The first science understanding is carbohydrates are naturally occurring sugars and their polymers. They are defined as either polyhydroxyaldehydes or polyhydroxyketones or substances that form these compounds on hydrolysis. So given its structural formula, determine whether a molecule is a carbohydrate. In terms of carbohydrates, we can define them in a number of ways. The first way is based on this initial definition. We can define carbohydrates as polyhydroxyaldehydes, polyhydroxyketones, or the polymers that are formed from the above. Many carbohydrates, but not all, conform to a general formula, CXH2YOY. One exception is deoxyribose, and you can see this over to the right. Um, it has a formula of C5H10O4. Here we have some examples of some common carbohydrates. We've got glucose, galactose, and fructose. And let's just confirm that they are carbohydrates. So firstly, with glucose, what we can see is it's a polyhydroxy aldehyde. It's got an aldehyde functional group up here, and it has many hydroxyl functional groups. Galactose is very similar, but you can see that the positioning of these hydroxyl groups is slightly different, but it is also a polyhydroxy aldehyde. And fructose is defined as a polyhydroxy ketone with many hydroxyl groups as such. One thing to keep in mind for the time being is that in aqueous solutions, some 5 and 6 carbon carbohydrates exist in equilibrium between what we call their chain and cyclic or ring form. As an example, we've got glucose here existing in a chain form, but in solution it also exists in a cyclic form. And this will be a bit more important at the end. This is our next science understanding. Disaccharides and polysaccharides are produced by the condensation of monosaccharide units linked in chains by covalent bonds. You'll need to know how to write molecular formulae for glucose and for disaccharides and polysaccharides based on glucose monomers. Draw the structural formula of the monosaccharide and monosaccharides, given the structural formula of a disaccharide, and identify the repeating unit and draw the structural formula of the monomer, given the structural formula of a section of a polysaccharide. Essentially, carbohydrates can exist in one of three forms, so namely a monosaccharide, a disaccharide, and a polysaccharide. We can define monosaccharides as being made up of one sugar unit, so glucose is an example. Disaccharides, on the other hand, are made up of two sugar units, which have joined together through condensation reactions. And then finally, polysaccharides, and in this case we've got amylose starch as an example, is formed through many sugar units, which are joining together through condensation reactions. Starting with monosaccharides, and in particular glucose, we can see here it's got the structural formula as such, in a chain form and a cyclic form. We can look at determining its molecular formula, so counting the carbons first. We can see one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Hydrogens, we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hydrogens. And finally, oxygen, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that gives us a molecular formula of C6H12O6. Might be worthwhile for you to just confirm that the cyclic or ring structure also has the same molecular formula. Next we have disaccharides. So we know that disaccharides are formed through two monosaccharide units joined together. And I did mention that they're formed through condensation reactions. What we can see in, highlighted in red here are the atoms that can join together to then form a water molecule. And then we end up joining the two units together through a bond called a glycosidic bond. To summarize, condensation reactions help link the monomer units together. We get the removal of water. And we've got an example here, which is of sucrose. If we consider that water has been removed, then we can determine that its molecular formula should be C12H22O11. And again, it's probably worthwhile that you go and check that based on the structural formula of sucrose. Here we've got an example question. Draw the structural formula or formulae of the monosaccharide of saccharides formed from the following disaccharides. The first example is maltose, and in red you can see that it is formed from two glucose units. So this is going to be formed from one monosaccharide. And to draw the molecular formulae, we can essentially copy out its structure and then look at modifying the bond that holds the 
monosaccharide units together. So at this point here, what we can do is assign a hydroxyl group onto that final carbon there, and that will form our monosaccharide unit or our glucose. For the second example, we've got lactose, and again, you can see in red that it's formed through these two monosaccharides, galactose and glucose. So let's start off with the first one, galactose. So there we have galactose, and just keep in mind that in this case, we haven't shown any of the carbon to hydrogen single bonds, so that's perfectly fine. And also just note that there's a little typo there where they've actually shown the bond between the carbon and the hydrogen. If you were to do that in a test or an exam, we will definitely deduct marks. For the second monosaccharide, which is glucose, we could refer back to the previous example, and we can see that it would have this particular structural formula here. A third type of carbohydrate is called a polysaccharide. Polysaccharides are formed from many monosaccharide units joined together through condensation reactions. Over to my right, we've got an example of a polysaccharide. And you can see with the square brackets, this is often used to indicate the repeating units within a polymer. Normally, we have the symbol N down the bottom right to indicate that this repeating unit can occur N number of times. But in this case, with our example, which is of starch, we can see that this repeating unit typically ranges from 300 to 600 repeating units. We can look at what's within the square brackets to determine the molecular formula. So I'll get you again to confirm this, but we should end up with a molecular formula of C6H1005 within brackets. And like I mentioned before, this incurs n number of times based on how many repeating units. And this usually isn't a definite number, so it can vary like in our example on the right. We've now got this example question. Identify the repeating unit and draw the structural formula of the monomer used to make the following polysaccharide. Um, you can see that there is already a repeating unit indicated, so let's just look at the monomer that's being used to make up this polysaccharide. So there we have the structure of the monomer that's used to make the following polysaccharide. Just note that at this particular site here and here, this is where those monomer units were joined together to form the polymer, and so we would have to look at the addition of water to reform our hydroxyl groups at each of those sites there. Everything else essentially stays the same. This is our final science understanding. In aqueous solution, there is an equilibrium between a ring form and a chain form of glucose. You'll need to explain the ability of glucose to react as an aldehyde when in chain form, but not when in ring form. So to revisit this idea, we can see that for glucose, that it exists in both a chain and ring form in aqueous solution. And these two are in equilibrium with one another. What we know is that in chain form, glucose is a polyhydroxy aldehyde. This means that it can be oxidized by Tollens' reagent. The ring form cannot react with Tollens' reagent. So here we have the structure of glucose represented in a slightly different way. And we know that Tollens' reagent is an oxidizing agent under alkaline conditions. So it's going to convert this aldehyde into a carboxylate anion. Essentially, everything else stays the same. And so there we have our structure of glucose in the chain form reacting and forming the carboxylate anion, whereas the ring form is unable to react with Tollens' reagent. That's it for 3.4 on carbohydrates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.